Hey, it's Jordan with Status Quo. Hope you had a nice 4th of July. The Democratic establishment and their allies in the corporate media uh, seem to be preserving uh, backups to President Biden in the event uh, that he doesn't make it all the way to 2024. Not wishing him death or anything, uh, but obviously not doing so hot in uh, his reelection polls, losing in many cases to former President Trump. And the latest greatest is uh, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, who uh, the New York Times, the Washington Post, most of the corporate media has been slobbering over with adoring profiles for years, uh, which is in stark contrast to the reality of her horrific governing in the state of Michigan. Uh, the latest gem is from Politico. Uh, they uh, wrote an adoring magazine piece uh, for Governor Whitmer. Uh, bypassing Biden, Democrats think of what could have been. In Michigan, a governor with a powerful message seems ready for the next step but an octogenarian president stands in her way. I'm not going to read most of this drivel, but give you the you know highlights here. At the very moment last month, the images of President Biden falling on stage at the Air Force Academy's commencement rocketed around the Internet. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer was reminding her state's business executives and political leaders about what could have been. Speaking at the Detroit Chamber of Commerce's act uh, annual conference on this resort island, uh, Mackinac Island, Whitmer won repeated applause from the centrist crowd by reciting the fruits of her party's so-called trifecta in Lansing. Uh, whenever the media calls something centrist, it means right wing, just so you know. With Democrats in control of the governor's office and both chambers of the state legislature following last year's election, Whitmer noted they had pushed through tax cuts, gun control measures, and protections for abortion and gay rights. Might I have the fire in the belly, she said? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I can't tell you. Uh, that was in reference to questions about potentially running for president. Pointing to the tension between her Midwestern modesty and the demands of running for president, she chuckled about having to get comfortable with bragging. Uh, apparently, her uh, fan club uh, is not excited to wait for her to run, uh, which is not as soon as some of her admirers would like. Democrats and Michigan's congressional delegation have pleaded with Whitmer to run. I'm told by officials familiar with the conversations and the lawmakers have themselves been nudged by colleagues from other states to push her. Notably, the roster of congressional Democrats from other states eager for a Whitmer bid include members of the Congressional Black Caucus. These backstage conversations have taken place as Biden's approval ratings show little sign of improvement and increasingly appear impervious to external events for good or ill. Of course, Democrats are betting that the most significant external event of all, Republicans re-nominating a candidate with more baggage than O'Hare at Thanksgiving, will tip the election again to Biden. So there you have it. Even uh, uh, people at this adoring conference want uh, Governor Whitmer to run in 2024. Uh, to hell with Joe Biden. Uh, Gretchen Whitmer, eh, maybe, uh, didn't close the door to 2028 did say I wouldn't run if Biden is still running. Uh, but this shows you the absolute awful, embarrassing, shameful disconnect between the adoring cosmopolitan elitist journalist set, uh, primarily in New York and DC, and actual reality of what these corporate ghouls do or don't do as governors. Uh, Governor Whitmer, in my view, has been a complete disaster particularly on the most pressing issues in Michigan that shockingly are not covered by the mainstream media. Uh, we'll start here uh, with the newest environmental calamity uh, that is poisoning and killing residents, not under the former Republican governor, that this current Democratic governor has helped uh, expand. Uh, as you know, recently I went to Kalamazoo, Michigan, where a multi-billion dollar packaging company, Graphic Packaging, has been releasing hazardous levels of toxic gases into a poor black neighborhood in Kalamazoo for over a decade. This governor and her administration, after receiving many, many, many complaints from predominantly black residents about the horrible smell coming from that plant, high rates of asthma, COPD, residents dying, helped the company expand in 2021. First, let's show you some of my reporting on graphic packaging and what they have been doing in Kalamazoo. The smell is really bad. Um, 
I can't even describe it. It's just a mix of like rotten something and it almost like the more you the closer you get it's it's a rotten smell and it kind of goes up your nostrils a little bit and this is at whatever time it is now probably six o'clock what is being released from that plant there's over 30 different toxic gases and chemicals sulfur dioxide hydrogen sulfide methyl, methyl mercaptan um V all kinds of VOCs that cause cancer. Um, I mean, the list is so long. Tol toluene, um, the list is long. And every single one of the toxic gases or toxic chemicals cause a disease like cancer, respiratory disease, kidney disease, you name it. In order to an asthma attack. Um, then she was 17. Then I found my son unresponsible. He couldn't breathe uh, to an asthma attack. Now, due to that, my son has a trach. He's on 24-hour oxygen, and I have a life support machine at my house. How old is your son? My son is 32, and he fight every day to stay alive. And my daughter was 17, and I have asthma really, really bad. And my daughter's twin sister has asthma really, really bad. She stay in the hospital like every two days I have to take her to the emergency room to get a, a, a real good asthma treatment. Now, how close do you live to the plant? I live right around the corner, right around the corner. And I've seen video, we aired it, where you basically could see it from your porch yes. and you were hacking your lungs out. What was this, like two in the morning? Because yes. it's a lot worse at night. Two in the morning, four in the morning, 5.30 in the morning, 8 at night, 7 at night, 5 in the evening. It's like after 5 o'clock, it get worse. The steam or the smoke comes out. But after 5, 6 o'clock, they really put it on torpedo, and it just they fill do. up the whole sky. It looked like the uh, clouds that came all the way down out the sky and be so filled up. That was Deanne Winfield, who tragically lost her 17-year-old daughter, who had minor asthma growing up. But as soon as they moved right next to that plant, her asthma got so severe, she had a horrendous asthma attack and couldn't be saved. Like she said, her 32-year-old son is now on 24-7 oxygen, has had several close calls that he almost died. Uh, I spoke with other residents. They can't really leave their house. The smell is so bad. Not right next to the plant. We're talking just in the neighborhood, not you know blocks and blocks away. Can't have guests over because the smell is so bad. Playgrounds are empty because the uh, ch parents don't let their children out. Schools don't put their kids out for recess nearby. There's a daycare very close to the plant. They don't bring the children out uh, for years, even predating Governor Whitmer. The Michigan Health Department, Environmental Department had received complaints from residents about this. Uh, you also had uh, the graphic packaging was fined for leaks and other environmental spills coming from this plant in 2021, despite despite uh, Governor Whitmer's administration having received complaint after complaint after complaint from uh, this plant, in uh, from residents about this plant, somehow Governor Whitmer's uh, environmental department, uh, excuse me, Governor Whitmer's uh, Michigan Economic Development Corporation approved this plant's expansion. Let me repeat approved this paper mills expansion. Graphic Packaging International, a packaging firm based in Atlanta, is expected to receive up to $125 million in private bonds to finance the expansion of its paper mill in Kalamazoo, Michigan. The Michigan De Economic Development Corporation Strategic Fund Board approved a resolution this month allowing this financing move for the expansion. The Michigan Economic Development Corporation is just a fancy term for an economic board filled with high rollers, donors to Republican and Democratic governors, real estate executives, nonprofit executives, basically a who's who of who's purchasing the government. Uh, Governor Whitmer appointed the former mayor of Kalamazoo, who was in bed with this paper mill poisoning the black residents, appointed him right after he left the mayorship. Isn't that interesting? And then this 
packaging company that's worth billions of dollars was approved for a $125 million bond deal to release more toxic gases into this community. Uh, let me show you, this is from uh, an interview I did with a resident on the white side of town, because after the expansion, not only is the smell and its health effects being uh, experienced uh, predominantly in the black side of town, now the white west side of Kalamazoo is smelling it. Uh, I asked him, why would the governor expand? Why would the governor allow this? Let's take a look. The other thing you mentioned with the environmental develop or the economic development corporation, one of the three Which, lines. Just so you know, the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, it, it's basically just a board with donors who give yep. money to the Republican governors or the Democratic governors. So you got real estate developers on there, lawyers, nonprofit executives. It's just like a slush slush fund board. Yep. There are other states with similar things, but uh, the Economic Council Board. Um, is just high rollers and donors on a board um, making decisions for the state, but it is an entity of the state government. Yes, and so the through line is the former mayor. The former mayor, Bobby Hopewell, was kind of oversaw graphic packaging, like taking ownership of that facility and uh, facilitated their expansion. Then when he was no longer mayor, the governor appointed him to the Economic Development Corporation, at which point that body facilitated the state supporting graphic packaging's expansion. And was the state not aware of all the complaints? We're not just talking like, oh, it smells bad, but it's not, it's not um, a safety problem. It's the smell is overwhelming and you have kids dying of severe asthma attacks um kids can't even play outside uh the school near the plant they don't even take them outside for recess so not that you uh, have the governor on speed dial but i have to assume she was aware her administration was aware of this problem and approved yeah. it anyway there there's no there's no rational explanation for the the state not being aware yeah because by that point graphic package had been fined several times there had been a number of complaints filed. So yes, they were aware. Yes, they were aware. Yet this wonderful governor who New York, DC journalists who don't give a shit about any of this, who cares about poor black people being poisoned? Uh, they don't seem to cover it. They don't seem to care. Uh, they just think, hey, Gretchen 2024, because Biden's tripping on stage. She's got that Midwestern twang doesn't she seem like a good slice of Americana? So it's not just Kalamazoo. Of course, the Flint water crisis, which is headed to a decade, it's ongoing. The water is still contaminated. Residents were excited when former uh, Republican governor who presided over their poisoning, Rick Snyder, was on his way out. They voted for Gretchen Whitmer, Whitmer expecting a Democrat would actually help solve the problem. Uh, she promised while a candidate that she would reopen the free water uh, stations that Republican Governor Rick Snyder shut down. Residents depended on that free water. Uh, when she got in, she did not reopen the free water stations, uh, in addition to several other broken promises. Let me show you a clip from my interview with former uh, Flint Mayor Karen Weaver. Uh, this was really illuminating because Mayor Weaver was hoping that uh, Flint would get more relief with Governor Whitmer in there. And she asked Governor Whitmer for help with certain things, including funding. Let's take a look at her experience after asking Governor Whitmer uh, for that help. Yeah, people are complaining about the water. One of the other things we asked about was we had a committee that was in place. And while people could not attend that committee, it was uh, in, in real time. What is it when they, they live feed it so the public can hear it? Mm -hmm. those, those meetings stopped because we could question all of these different entities. You'd have uh, MDEQ or now Eagle. You'd have someone from the EPA. You'd have someone from the school, from the health systems. You know, all of these uh, agencies and uh, you'd have people from the universities, you know, engineers, scientists, so we could have these kinds of conversations. And also with the money, you know, how is the money being spent? What kinds of testing is going to, on? And uh, people could hear that information and stay on top of things. I asked Governor Whitmer to please keep that in place as a way to keep the, the, the residents informed because we're trying to reestablish trust as well. Didn't happen. Um. 
Correct me if I'm wrong, but when you spoke with her about needing funds to help uh, with interior plumbing, mm -hmm. I mean, G Jesus can bless the water and send it through new pipes, but if the pipes inside your home are busted because of toxic water, you're still going to have things, uh, heavy metals leaching off. Uh, so you had, you know, tried to get Governor Whitmer to assist with funds, and is it not correct she basically told you, you know, people are tired of this? That's what, they have flint fatigue. They have flint fatigue. I said, well, what do you think we have? You know, I mean, you don't think we're tired of being on bottled water? I mean, don't you think that? That's not something, I mean, what's so exciting about that? If you would fix it, you wouldn't have flint fatigue. So the Midwest Messiah, Gretchen Whitmer, who all the corporate media is slobbering over, told the uh, former mayor, well, we got flint fatigue, so can't help you. But she is there for the LGBTQ community. She won't go after Disney and does other beautiful virtue signaling. Not to mention, uh, Gretchen Whitmer, she should thank the media uh, who has basically protected her, slobbered all over her, because she, like former Governor Andrew Cuomo of New York, also had a bit of a scandal when it comes to sending uh, the elderly with COVID back to nursing homes, uh, which led to more death than was necessary. But the media kind of helped her cover it up, uh, and she fudged the numbers like Andrew Cuomo uh, in terms of the death count in the state of Michigan when it comes to seniors in nursing homes. But the media never took, took her to task. Uh, let me show you uh, my friend, Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Charlie LaDuff, who sued the state of Michigan to get the accurate uh, death count number in nursing homes from COVID. We need an absolute look into the nursing home response. We know that everything Governor Whitmer did, she cribbed from Governor Cuomo, and everybody knows Governor Cuomo's problems separate from the women. She likes to quote, I, I got this, she likes to quote reports. This is based on what's put on the website, the data. This one where she says we save lives. It has nothing to do with nursing homes. So I'm calling her out. I'm suing you. I want the real data. I want to know in December and January and February, all those vital records you were looking at, did they come from the nursing homes? Were they old people? Are you cooking the books? I'm not claiming that the state did anything, but they sure are making it hard to believe in them right about now. Well, uh, once the numbers did come out, sure seems like they were cooking the books, but she has that Midwestern twang, so don't worry about it. Uh, this is from an audit in the state of Michigan. Whitmer administration undercounted COVID nursing home deaths by 42%. A new audit found Governor Gretchen Whitmer's administration undercounted COVID-19 nursing home deaths by 42% or 2,386 deaths. At issue is how many nursing deaths occurred in Michigan and whether Whitmer's COVID-19 policies exacerbated nursing home deaths by housing infected patients with those most vulnerable to die from COVID-19. COVID-19 disproportionately kills the elderly and those with pre-existing health conditions. In Michigan, 84% of the state's total COVID-19 victims were people aged 60 and older. The Auditor General's report found that the total number of COVID deaths at long-term care facilities at 8,061 compared to the state's previous self-reported tally of 5,675, uh, like I'm experiencing now because Governor Whitmer and her administration will not respond to me, and I found out other reporters on the Kalamazoo crisis, where she approved this toxic paper mill poisoning the Black community, she approved that plant graphic packaging expansion, she will not respond to questions or requests for comment from me or other journalists. She would not respond uh, to efforts from Charlie Little Duff and others to the accurate numbers to the point that she had to be sued. And finally, those numbers were released to show they undercounted and fudged the numbers. This is who the Democratic establishment, this is who the media, which is in bed with the Democratic establishment, want to throw Joe overboard. Listen. I'm no Joe Biden stand, would love a replacement uh, to run in 2024, uh, preferably an actual living, breathing progressive rather than this corporate ghoul, Gretchen Whitmer. But the media is transfixed. You know, she has that Midwestern twang, the smile. She's friendly to LGBTQ people, trans community. Those are all good things. To her credit, 
and the Democratic legislature. They overturned right to work in Michigan, a major accomplishment. So it's not all awful, but on the life or death issues and environmental calamities and environmental poisoning and corruption, there's very little difference between her and her predecessor who poisoned Flint. 